We're back. It's double A SLR again. We're having a party today. We've got Steve, Ashley, Gabe, and me all here. Oh, man. Yeah. We got my sound effects for it. You know, when oh, I'm well. on, we got to have that sound. That's true. I got to <laughs> write myself. I get, need, I need like a reminder when, when Steve exists, have soundboard. <laughs> But uh, today, Steve's got a demo of some good stuff for us with with uh, fishes, big fishes, mm -hmm. lots of fishes, lots of fishes. So what are we Dynamic doing? Dynamic device code fishing. That's right. That's right. We're gonna learn all oh, yeah, about device right. codes and how to use them. Sweet. We've got this awesome slide here just for this. Don't yeah. So, don't uh, don't be scared. I've only got like five slides before we roll into the live demos. All right, well, let's get right into it. We're going to fade away for the moment, but uh, we'll be watching you, Steve. All right. Feel free to interject or pop up if you've got uh, notice questions in Discord or wherever on, on Restream, and uh, we'll talk about it. I am open for questions. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, dynamic device code phishing. So I'm not going to really tell you how to fish today, but I'm going to show you how to build in quick infrastructure to do device code phishing. If you've followed my blogs or my, my tweets, uh, you'll see that I, I talk a lot about uh, device code phishing uh, because it's powerful, uh, it's a legitimate website people have to log into and things like that. So um, let's get on with it. Who am I? My name is Steve Borsch. Uh, I work here at Black Hills Information Security. Uh, there's my GitHub, there is my Medium blog page. So if you wanna read all about the stuff that I've done, uh, the tools uh, that I've created, please visit those websites or follow me on Twitter. Uh, let's see. Actually, I got hired um, by posting to GitHub, my first uh, my first job in InfoSec. So if you're new to this and you're wanting to know how do I get in, get started and get into this, I like to tell people those two things right there, your blog and your GitHub will get you rolling pretty well, um, show you know your talents. Uh, even if it's just you know mundane scripts, hello world or whatever, to show you that you can do it in every language. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, Put your stuff out there. So let's get started with what are device codes. Uh, so device codes, you can think about as like if you go to log into something on your TV. So let's say for instance Netflix or Roku or something like that. Plug that into your TV. It pops up and says, Hey, do you want to sign in? What are you going to get out your keyboard, plug it into the TV and type your code? Not so much. Uh, it does give you the option to log in with either a QR code. You can scan it with your phone if you're signing in, uh, if you're logged in from your phone. Or to give you a URL that you can go to a website. Uh, so like netflix.com forward slash uh, code or login or whatever. And then you go, it'll, the code that shows you on the TV, then you go pop that into the browser and you're signed into the TV. So provides remote access to services. So that's what we're gonna use uh, device codes with phishing, but in this case, we're going to use device codes for, um, for phishing Microsoft services. I'm told to check my mic settings, uh-huh. There we go. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. Uh, so Microsoft, they do have um, a device code login as well. It's actually at microsoft.com forward slash device login. So you go to that website, you can browse there right now. It is a legitimate Microsoft website. I'm not phishing you. You can go there, log in, and this prompt uh, will display, enter a code, and we'll pull that up here in a minute. Uh, so user logs in, they sign in with the device code, and then you as the attacker or the phisher on the back end, you get that uh, session that they signed in with. So how do we do that? We need a few tools. So I wrote uh, token tactics to basically receive tokens and refresh them to other services or the two main functions of them. So with token tactics, we can, it's a PowerShell script. We can generate a code. We can provide that code to a user. And then that user logs in with that code and we receive that uh, session on the back end. We're just basically polling Microsoft's API for um, that token response. So with that token, you can do things like read and send emails uh, through EWS or Outlook, or you can send uh, 
Teams messages. So a big thing that we like doing these days is Microsoft Teams phishing. Uh, and you can do that. You don't have to have a target user's uh, token to do that. You can do that from uh, your own Azure tenant or Microsoft 365 tenant, business tenant as well. Uh, you can enumerate Azure AD. You can run things like Azure Hound, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and then Microverse or whatever else takes an access token, basically. Uh, you can use the AZ commands uh, directly and log into various uh, services through Azure. So I think one of the most powerful parts of token tactics is the fact that you can refresh from one service to another. So typically I'll fish with um, a Microsoft Graph token. I'll fish to get a Microsoft Graph uh, graph token. And then I'll take that graph token and I'll switch it over to, let's say, an Outlook token or a Microsoft Substrate token. So that way I can then access email through Exchange Web Services. Or refresh to Microsoft Teams and access Microsoft Teams. So it's a pretty powerful way to do um, switching between different uh, target uh, applications. All right, so the dynamic portion of this, when you send that access code, and we'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, when we send that access code, we have 15 minutes for that user to sign in before we'll lose that session token. So once they sign in, we're good then. We have a refresh token that's good for 90 days, and that access token is good for one hour. So if that access token uh, is you know, timed out or whatever, uh, you refresh that token and you can get a new one that's good for 90 days. A uh, new refresh token is good for 90 days, but you can just keep getting access tokens. Somewhat similar to uh, Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services, where you can just keep refreshing, uh, getting new uh, stuff. But um, this is good for 90 days. Pretty uh, interesting. Now we can extend that 15 minute time limit. Uh, from the time of sending the fish. So in this case, we're not going to send the token to the user. We're going to redirect them to go to a website. When they go to that website, the token is dynamically generated on the back end and displayed to them on the website and says, hey, go to Microsoft.com, go to forward slash login or device login and enter this code. So how do we do that? Well, we use Azure App Tools, which is a suite of Azure application tools that I wrote. And um, easily deployable with the AZ uh, commandlet tools. And you can create things such as phishing sites. So you can do things like credential, um, credential grabbing. So like simple PHP, you can uh, even stand up a, a website through Azure websites and use like Zfisher. So there's a, a platform out there called Zfisher. And you can run that on there and grab credentials for various services. You can also do drive-by downloads. That's a big one I like to do. Um, host your ISO or image file or whatever you want up there, whatever you've got that's the new uh, bypass mark of the web hotness, which is the new like zip, um, you know, bad signature these days. So you can also do C2 redirection. So if you use things like PowerShell Empire or Cobalt Strike or Covenant or Sliver or any C2 basically out there, that you can point at a uh, redirector, you can point it at an Azure websites.net site and redirect uh, via an IIS server. So um, the good thing about that is you get an Azure websites.net domain on the back end. So it's a legitimate, legitimate Microsoft services website, right? And you get a valid SSL certificate. Um, it's going to get through most proxies unless you're specifically blocking Azure websites.net. It is categorized as something internet technology, I think. Um, but a legitimate website, you can host all your stuff up there. Keep in mind that this is subject to Microsoft terms of use. So yes, I have seen people get banned for hosting malware um, on the drive by download site. So don't put your EXE up there and name it, you know, CrowdStrike bypass.exe or whatever. Microsoft might uh, find that and uh, ban your subscription. So be careful. So that's that. That's, uh, that's all the slides I had. I just wanted to talk uh, through a little bit about what device codes were and are and how to use them real quick. So I've got my handy PowerShell prompts here in the terminal. I have four prompts here. I have, uh, first off, a deploy capture server. 
So for the backend infrastructure for this to work, we need a virtual machine to capture the codes that are gonna get sent from the user. And then we need um, token tactics to be running somewhere to capture those tokens. So this is all gonna be uh, mostly automated. The standup of the infrastructure is automated. And I've put a deployment script out today. So if you go to my GitHub, you can go to token tactics. If you can put that link in our private chat, I can share that. In the yeah, chat. absolutely. We'll do that. There you go. There is the link to token tactics. And within token tactics, I have, you can see this is a PowerShell module, right? Token tactics is a PowerShell tool. You can then go into the capture token fish folder and there's a deploy capture server PowerShell module. So what you do here is you log in with Azure or AZ client, AZ, AZ space login, use device code and then you can log in with the device code you'll be logged into the azure tenant or your azure client and then you can run this powershell script it'll deploy everything uh it's just a few lines of of azure stuff so you're opening ports that that are needed actually run certbot it gets you a legitimate ssl certificate for your azure vm uh, that way the uh, azure website's redirection can, can redirect to it um, the browser can with the valid cert So we uh, run this deploy capture server. I'm not going to do that right now. It takes about 15 minutes to deploy everything. So um, I've already done that. Next thing to do is once the uh, VM is up, we can use uh, AZ Web App up to deploy our dynamic device code website. But let's look at the code for that real quick. All it is is an index.html file. Uh, this deploys as a static website. And we use um, a service called Cores Anywhere. It's not really a service, it's a, um, it's a GitHub repo. So Cores Anywhere will forward all the traffic from a destination basically to you, proxy it to your browser. And what we see here is we're running Cores Anywhere on flux.io. Uh, anybody here know what Flux is? Well, uh, if you don't, uh, and you're not into cryptocurrency maybe, <laughs> but, Cryptocurrency or blockchain, uh, Flux is one of them. So what we're doing here is we're using distributed nodes to proxy our traffic. So this is an actual application running on Flux, just like it was running on Ethereum or something like that. So Flux is a different network. Now we can proxy our, our traffic through login.microsoft.online, all the way down here to get a token for graph.windows.net. You can change this to use a different endpoint or resource if you would like um, to do that. But in our lab, in this case, we're just going to get a graph token. And then what we're going to do is we're going to forward that to this site, this BHIS token webinar .us .cloud -app .azure .com. Ooh, DNS website. So that is our fully qualified domain name for our VM. So we're going to listen on port 8443. And we're going to send the device code to that service that's listening there. And then we're going to receive that on the back end with token tactics and parse out the token, save it to a log file so we can use it later. So all you need to do really is run this Azure web up, web up command. And if you need these commands, there's, they're uh, right here on my GitHub for Azure app tools. Tells you right here how to deploy the uh, website, AZ Web App Up, one command, and it deploys the website. Pretty easy to do. All right, next. So my, my VM is, is deployed. I can now use an AZ commandlet to uh, SSH into my VM. If you didn't know that, it's a pretty handy way. You can feed it a, a key file, so your private key, uh, your local user you want to sign in as, uh, your name of your VM and the resource group. Thanks Gabe for posting the uh, Azure App Tools link. Appreciate that. So I've already SSH'd into my server with that command. I have a screen session running uh, called capture. All right, and I have a command ready called capture token fish and port 8443. So that's the port that I'm gonna listen on 
for my device codes to come in. And then I have token tactics over here imported. I also have um, AAD internals imported. And if you want to know how to import token tactics, we go to the GitHub and we follow the instructions, import module token tactics. And then you can run any of the token tactics commandlets that are present, present here or use the git command module token tactics and spit out uh, the help. And I do want to talk about uh, AAD internals because I will be using that real quick to show how to enumerate Azure Active Directory once you've gained uh, access with the token. So aadinternals.com or Office 365 blog um, has a great resource here for finding everything Azure AD uh, and Microsoft 365 as far as offense and defense is concerned. So uh, you can go in here and you can check the AAD kill chain. You can click on that link and this uh, reference guide here, you can zoom in on. So if you're an outsider, if you're a guest or a user or an admin, it will then tell you which commandlets are relevant to you. So if you're an outsider, you can enumerate the tenant domains and things like that. You can enumerate users as outsider and perform basic recon as well. All kinds of fun stuff in AAD internals. So check that out for sure. I will put this into the chat. Thank you again for posting that. And lastly, before I get into uh, demoing the token tech, uh, the token device token part, I wanted to talk about my blog, how to spoof Microsoft 365. It's 1995. So this blog uh, generated a lot of traffic and um, a lot of people are testing it out, finding, oh, this does or doesn't work on my tenant. Yes, that's great. If it doesn't, because you're protected, hopefully. If not, uh, read the blog. Uh, basically, uh, long story short here, or TLDR, uh, is that you can send messages inside an organization remotely through what's called a smart host. So organization-com.mail.protection.outlook.com is an SMTP server. Uh, yes, if you use Microsoft 365, it is there. Uh, whether it's protected or not, you might want to go check. Uh, so basically, you can spoof anybody external to internal or internal to internal, as long as several conditions exist. Um, conditional access doesn't matter. Uh, basically, we're sending an unauthenticated SMTP spoof uh, directly into an organization. So that's how I would uh, theorize uh, of sending this fish. Basically, you can do that with a, a mail command, uh, send mail message right here, and just point it to the company.com, mail protection outlook, and then send your mail inside the organization. You won't be able to do this from your home IP because uh, it will be blocked by thousand different things, um, but you should be able to do it through uh, the Azure portal, which is where I like to do it because you're in an IP space, which is typically in SPF reference. Something to think about. Let's get on with the demo. All right, so I've got these things ready. I'm logged in here. I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, I've got my website deployed. And if you change anything on the website, you can hit uh, AZ web app up and just hit it again and just redeploy the app after you change your code and it will just redeploy over the previous application. So I'm going to start my server. I've got my capture token fish going. I can then come over here to my browser. So I'm logged in to mail as uh, Lord Nikon here. So Lord Nikon at FutureSec decides to go follow this fish. Browse to webinarcodes.azurewebsites.net. Co you can see that here, webinarcodes.azurewebsites.net. It then prompts the user. It says, hey, you need to open the browser page, microsoft.com device login, and enter this code. Let's go ahead and do that. You can see on the left-hand side, we're sitting here waiting for somebody to sign in. Microsoft.com device login. Legitimate website, user goes to visit it. We hit enter and log in. It's going to prompt, hey, do you want to log in with this account? Yes, Lord Nikon. 
Are you trying to sign into Microsoft Office? Well, whatever the ruse was that was fished to me, I said I needed to sign back into Microsoft Office. So here I am. Continue. Uh, you've signed in to Microsoft Office. Great. And then on this side, we see uh, some tokens fly in. And then token tactics keeps resuming. So if you get multiple fishes, this will spawn separate processes and continue to capture tokens for different fishes. So you can fish multiple people this way. We'll go ahead and kill that. I'm going to ls the directory. And we see here that we have a token log.log. That contains our access token, well, the username, the access token, and the refresh token for that user. I'm not going to display those on screen. I have those over here in a refresh token.txt file. Excuse me. So we can load that refresh token into a variable in PowerShell. We can then refresh that token. I have token tactics loaded, so I can say, hey, let's refresh this to a core management token. We're going to use a core management token. Uh, that way we can enumerate Active Directory. So the domain was futuresec.io. Refresh token is in that variable. I have taken out the visual aids that token tactics typically gives you for this, uh, per, for this uh, recording because it does display your tokens. So keep that in mind if you're showing a client or something like that, the, the access tokens and whatever will, will show up. Um, I need to add some suppression to that, but uh, just keep that in mind. So I have now an Azure for management token. I can pass that to get member and see that I have a refresh token and an access token. Great, what can we do with that? Well, I'm going to set uh, my domain to futuresec.io. And then I'm going to, uh, well, I've already done that refresh. So now we can add, one of the things I did recently to token tactics was make the ability to interop or interact or interop with um, AAD internals. So if we wanna use AAD internals with token tactics, um, we need to basically take our tokens and put them into Azure uh, AAD internals. Pretty easy. One command, uh, which is just to add it to the cache. So add AAD int access token to cache. We're going to give it the variable for Azure Core Management token since we've refreshed to that. And then dot access token because that was one of the members. Uh, same thing with... Um, our refresh token, right? Same variable, refresh token. So now we've added that uh, token to our cache. We can now enumerate users as insider. So now we've fished that user. We've become that user. We've become Lord Nikon. Now whatever Lord Nikon has access to, we have access to. So we enumerate the users in, a, in Azure AD. We have eight users. All right, great. So let's take the emails out of there because once I've gained access to my first entry point into a, a tenant or an organization, the first thing I do is dump all the email addresses that I can find. Because if I get booted, if I get kicked out, I need to have every user that I can to password spray again or to refish, right? So I'm gonna dump all the emails and then I'm gonna filter out um, all of the future sec users. There we go. Somebody watches Hacker's movie, Crash Override, Dade Murphy, Lord Nikon, Steve. Hey, there I am. If you want to send me an email, ask me a question, feel free. Don't spam me. Uh, but that is what you can do with tokens. Uh, you can also refresh and read Teams messages. We can send emails. We can do all kinds of different stuff. So um, pretty powerful in my opinion. And the fact that we've now moved the token generation to the website, we now have 15 minutes from the time that user not only opens the phishing email, but browses to your phishing website, and then 15 minutes from that to the sign-in. So it extends our period of time we have to capture tokens. We've automated the process, so we can do it all in the back end. I tried to make it as easy as possible for people to use. 
Um, so hopefully uh, you find it useful and you can go out and test your clients and uh, organizations and make sure everything's as secure as can be. If uh, We'll be open for questions uh, if you have them now. Let's see, what time is it? 4.56? Yeah, just about half an hour. Awesome. Yeah, there was one question I, yeah. I saw earlier. Does any of this activity show up in the M Defenders audit? So when you're looking at this stuff, you're going to have sign-ins, right? You're going to see sign-in logs, but who's signing in? Not me. Uh, the user signed in, and that's what's going to go into the log. And because we are using Flux, my user probably just signed in from like Germany or somewhere else, uh, Brazil, wherever, uh, wherever that Flux node is running. So if you want to, um, you can get around that. And I suggest doing this is using something like Heroku. Uh, so I go to Heroku and I uh, forked the cores anywhere repo to my GitHub. And then I just deployed a Heroku app named device codes. And now in my, um, my index.html, I take this out, cores anywhere, and I point it to my Heroku app. So now I know it's coming out of the, the US. It's going to look different on the conditional access policies that would normally be seen. I don't think uh, Defender really would see it. It would be your conditional access policies for the sign in logs. Um, and then the user getting fished, the user getting password sprayed, or something like that, the user signing in from weird locations. Cool. No more other questions, at least more so questions. far. All right. uh, yeah. We'll do last call for questions. And while we do last call, we'll do, take this time to promo your class, which you, you've got on uh, on demand, I believe. I got the link up there for his, his class. Uh, uh, the next live one we might do in, in March, either February or March of next year. Uh, there is the on demand the version. Chat? Yeah. Absolutely. I even yeah, got I'll, the... I'll throw it up here. Um, you can also uh, visit my site at futuresec.io. It takes you back to um, takes you back to our anti-siphon course sign-up page anyways. So you can go there and you can see some of the previous webcasts that I've done uh, with anti-siphon training in, in here and uh, see some of the cool stuff. So the spoofing Microsoft 365 actually walked through some of that there, uh, how to host payloads, uh, and then see that and more in my Ashley says she was going to take my class. I know she there we go. Well, you're muted, Ashley. Ashley is going to take your class. Sorry, I was double muted. <laughs> double <laughs> muted. Credit. Can, can you uh, give me that link for your website yeah, there, sure. Steve? Copy and paste that over real quick. One and two. Yeah, so if you're interested in uh, offensive red teaming, this class is for you. If you're interested in uh, testing your organizations or seeing what uh, attackers can do against, um, let's say, Azure, 3, Azure or Microsoft 365 or how they generate payloads and send them into your environment. Uh, I've had both red and blue um, join my class, just about the same amount, same amount of people for each side. So um, read about it. If it interests you, sign up for on demand or hopefully I'll be getting it. I got to check with our uh, people, but uh, in March as well for our our right. uh, summit. Cool. Any other, any other comments from Ashley or Gabe? Gabe's been very quiet this broadcast. Yeah. No, what I can say, uh, I first of all, I should have opened the light before, but uh, Steve's course is awesome. I took it. I, I, I can recommend it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Thank you. I'll take pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. Uh, no, you look great there. The, I got, do you have one of those like podcast lights in front of you? No, but I, you I, the, I need is that your laptop. It looks like you're in the movie hackers. Right I need a hoodie. Hello. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, cool. All right. Well, no other questions are coming in. So I guess we can wrap this double ASLR up, which is great. We're Thank about you. I appreciate minutes. everyone stopping by. And if you have any questions, hit us up on discord or, uh, shoot me an email. Awesome. All right. We'll see everybody next time. Killing it with fire.